If you have a loan of a hundred thousand dollars and you are paying your lender four points, what are those four points going to cost? One percent each, four percent. Four points is equal to one percent per point. So four percent of the loan amount will be the cost of those points. 100,000 times 4%. Four percent Everyone get $4,000. That's pretty easy math. 100,000 times 4%. Mm -hmm. All amount times Anytime you're calculating points, you're going to do the number of points as so a percentage a times the loan amount. And that'll give you <sighs> the cost. Okay? Any questions? <sighs> Okay, then let's look at the investor yield. When an investor pays 1% or one discount point, that point is going to reduce his interest rate one eighth of a percent. And that one eighth discount point will increase the lender's yield one-eighth of a percent. Remember last week I drew a pizza pie and cut it into eight pieces and each piece represented one-eighth of a percent. So if you wanted to reduce your interest rate one-half of a percent, you had to eat half Four, the pizza. Yeah, uh -huh which was four pieces. Four pieces. Yep, yep, yep. Or if you wanted to reduce your interest rate one whole percent from five down to four, you'd have to eat the whole pie, which is eight pieces. And that would reduce your interest rate one percent, but at the same time, it's going to increase the lender's yield by one percent. So think of it this way. Discount points are going to bring the interest rate down and yield is going to take it up. Yield goes up, rate of interest, uh, discount points go down. Okay, so let's look at this problem. You've got six points. Oh, Keisha wants me to repeat that. Interest, I mean, your discount points are going to decrease your interest rate. You're paying prepaid interest when you pay discount points, and that will decrease your rate. But when you pay that discount point amount, 1% per of your loan amount per point, that is giving the lender money back, which is increasing his yield. So his yield goes up and your dis, um, your rate goes down. That's what happens when you're buying discount points. Okay. Got it now, Keisha? Okay. All right. Now this problem, if a loan carried an interest rate of nine and a half percent with six discount points, the yield would be calculated as okay, six points. How many eighths would that be? Six Six points. eighths. Is six eighths, six pieces of the pie. And that's three fourths. Six points, three eighths. 
That's three right. fours. Okay. Or six eighths. Got it. Six rather than three. Six eighths equals 0.75. Mm -hmm. So when you buy six points, you are decreasing your interest rate by 0.75%, and you are increasing the yield that by that same rate. Okay. So you've got 9.5% interest rate. You're buying six points, which is 0.75 or three fourths. Add those two. Add nine and a half plus three fourths. And what do you get? Okay, interest rate nine and a half. Ten and a quarter, right. That's what the and lender is going to be yielding. Six points, the yield. He's going to give you the interest rate of six and a half, but you're giving him 6% of your loan amount up front, and that's yielding him a rate of 10 and a quarter. You see why lenders like you to buy discount points? It increases their yield on that loan. Understand? Any questions? Okay, let's look at the next example. If an investor requires ten and a half which is 10 and 4 eighths. But he's going to give you an interest rate of 10 and 2 eighths. How many points will you pay? Ten and a half minus 10 and a quarter would be two points, right? Yep. That would be two points. Points. Oh, <sighs> Anyone have a question about that? Two eighths equals two points, right, Cody? Mm -hmm. okay. Questions? Okay. Now this sitting in your book. But how much, if your loan was $100,000, how much would those two points cost? 2% of 100000 is like $200. $2,000, right. Right. Okay. Okay. Earlier today when we were working on PITI payment for qualifying the buyer. We had to find the PI, and then we found the monthly T and the monthly I to get the PITI. Well, here's the formula Pay for that. It. On page 381, down toward the bottom, principal and interest, taxes and insurance, your PITI payment. Principal? If the borrower wants to borrow $130,000 at 7.5% for 30 years with a loan factor of 6.99, his annual taxes are $1,200, his homeowner's insurance is $360 annually. What would be his PITI payment? Now remember, anytime they give you a mortgage factor or loan factor, you must divide your loan amount by 1,000 and then multiply times the factor. 
So $130,000 loan divided by 1,000 is 130 times the factor. The factor they gave was 6.99. What is your PI payment? Nine oh eight seventy. What was the question asked for? What is the monthly pity? All right. nine hundred and eight dollars and seventy cents anybody not get that one thirty times six point nine nine is nine hundred and eight dollars and seventy cents okay that is your pi principal and interest but the question is, what is your PITI? So we've got to calculate what uh, that would be and add it to the 90870. Your taxes are 1200 a year. How much would that be per month? 1200 divided by 12. $100, right. Okay. Now remember that 100. And then we've got insurance is 360 a month. I mean, year. Divide that 360 by 12, and that'll give you the monthly insurance. 30. $30, so right. 70 plus a 30 plus a 100. Now, take your PI. 90870 oh. plus 100T. Plus thirty dollars I, Personal. and that will give you your PITI payment. What do you get? I think we need to slow down. When it comes to actually breaking this down, you get one hundred and thirty-eight seventy. A thousand thirty-eight dollars and seventy cents. Anyone have a question about how we came up with a thousand thirty eight dollars and seventy cents? No questions? Okay, this next problem is interest paid over the life of the loan. This is the one that will blow some people's minds. Okay. To calculate your interest paid over the life of the loan, you're going to take your PI payment and multiply that times the number of payments and that'll give you total payback. And then subtract the loan amount, which is your principal and that'll leave you with the interest paid. So in this problem, we've got a PI payment of $498.75. And a 30-year oh, loan. A question. In 30 years, you're What's going to make 12 payments per year. How many payments will you make in 30 years? Okay. 30 times 12, 360, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. 360 payments at $498.75. How much do you pay back? Multiply 360 times $498.75. The real question is, what the fuck is the question? Like, what?
kids, you are paying back a hundred and seventy nine thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Hundred and seventy nine five fifty is what you pay back. Now, how much did you borrow? What was the loan amount? $75,500. Subtract that from the $179,550. And that'll tell you how much interest was paid on this loan. $179,550. Minus 75,500. If this borrower keeps that loan for 30 years and makes the minimum payment of $498.75 each month, he will pay $104,050 in interest. Mm. More than he borrowed is going to be paid back in interest. Do you see why banks want to make loans? Katrina says it makes her sick. Stephanie says that's ridiculous. But that's real life, y'all. That's real life. When your borrower gets their loan, their lender will give them an amortization chart. And it, if it's a 30-year loan, it'll show each of the 360 payments and how much of that is going to interest and how much is going to principal. I wouldn't advise they look at it. It will make you sick. Yeah. When I bought my house, they gave me an amortization chart and I haven't looked at it yet. I don't want to know. <laughs> you just don't know. No, I'll just no. make my payment and be happy yep. to own a house. But I don't want to know how much of my payment's going to interest and how much is going to principal. Okay. Any questions about how to do that math? Oh, okay. Um, Christina, the, the reason that is accurate is because your principal and interest payment is going to stay the same, but your amount applied to interest each month and the amount applied to principal each month will change. But when you're doing your payment times the number of payments, that's going to tell you your total payback. And then when you subtract the loan, that's going to leave you just the interest. And that only works if you have a fixed rate mortgage. If you've got an adjustable rate, you can't do this. But if your rate stays the same for all the term of your loan, then multiplying the number of payments times your payment will give you the total payback. Okay. All right, let's look at page 382. This is your mortgage debt reduction. Now we did one like this on the PowerPoint earlier, where we calculated how much interest and then subtracted that from the PI payment to find out how much principal and then deducted that from the loan amount. That's the same problem. So let's take a look at it. Your monthly payment is $498.75. Mm. 
Your loan amount is $75,500 at 7% interest. What will your new balance be after the first payment has been made? First thing we have to do is find out how much interest for one month will be paid on that loan. You do that using that formula of loan amount times the interest rate. So take your 75,500 times 7%. And that will give you annual interest. You guys are what do you get? 440, 42. 75,500 times 7%. So we had a 440, 42, and then you had a 490, 75. So what do I do? Do I add that to the 440? $5,285. That's for the whole year. Principal, interest, taxes, and interest. To get monthly, divide it by 12. Yes, yeah, so subtract that. And subtract that. 5, 5833 from the total amount. $440.42. That is the interest. Now, if your total payment is $498.75, principal and interest, and your interest is $440.42, how much is the principal? I'm seeing $58.33. Mm -hmm. Is that what everyone retired? Okay, if your loan was 75,500 and the principal portion of the payment was $58.33, what is your balance after that first payment was made? Remember 58.33 is all that's going to be deducted. $75,441.67. That's correct. Anybody have a question? Okay, then the next one is loan origination fees, 
discount points and assumption fees. These are lender fees that are charged at closing. Okay. Typically, your origination fee is 1%. It could be less, it could be more, depending on the lender. But the typical is 1%. Use whatever they give you in the problem. And if they don't tell you what the percentage is, sometimes they'll say the normal loan origination fee, the normal is 1%. A loan amount is ninety thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. The lender will charge one percent loan origination fee. Market rate is six and a half, but the buyer wants six percent, uh. which the lender has approved. What is the total amount in fees paid to the lender? Okay. If the rate is going to be reduced from six and a half to six, how much is that reduction? Subtract those two rates, six and a half minus six. Point five, right, okay. If that rate is going to be reduced one half a percent, which is four eighths, how many points is it? Four. Right, that is four points. Those four points are going to cost 4% of the loan amount. Okay. Now keeping that in mind, let's calculate this problem. You've got a loan of 90500 1% loan origination. What is your loan origination fee? Where are you at? 90,500 times 1%. Where are you going? Yeah, just like, yeah. Oh, wait, where is it? So, uh, so it's 1% loan origination fee. $905. Oh, no, is that what everybody typed? Okay. Now those four points are going to be 4% of 90,500. So 90,500 times 4% is how much? Three thousand six hundred and twenty. Okay. Now add that to the nine hundred and five dollars for the origination, and what are the lender fees on that loan? One eighth is discount point the worth. So Four thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars. Four eighths. Is that what everybody replied? Four points. Anybody not get four thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars? Does anyone have a question about how we cut $4,525? No prequel tiles. Okay, take a break. Really crazy question. I'll see you in